My name is John White. We've been here about 20 years and I've been working on this uh, pretty continuously all that time. And put in water features, planted lots of trees, uh, taken out a bit of grass um, and slowly shaped it into what it is now. My mother complains that, uh, that I, I didn't do any gardening when I was a kid. I got into it when we moved into our first home and we had this little square of garden, you know, maybe the size of this patio out the back, and I just thought it was so cool uh, to actually, you know, uh, you know, own a place and be able to, you know, garden on anything. So I got into it then, and uh, so it just kind of took off. So I found myself outside every weekend working on this massive project. Then we moved here, and I just never stopped. So this is a fountain uh, which uh, was uh, built by Douglas Walker, who's uh, an artist from Vancouver Island. Uh, and this is a commission piece. Uh, we asked Douglas to put together a fountain that featured instruments uh, which members of our family play. So every instrument in there is played by somebody in this house. Uh, I'm the trombone player at the top there, and so we've been really happy with this. Uh, some of these plants came from my mother's garden. Uh, she sold her, her house 
in 2004 and basically said, you know, dig out anything you can. So this rhododendron here uh, used to grow, or a, a part of one that used to grow outside my bedroom window when I was a kid. So a little bit of my childhood, I guess you might say. Big fan of rhododendrons, like rhododendrons. So there's, a, uh, there's a couple of species of rhododendrons. Uh, they've got that tropical look, um, great flowers. Uh, they look good all year round. Uh, and again, it's just another local signature plant. Uh, very, very west coast, I think. This has only been here for a couple of years. This used to be a patio uh, when we moved in and it just looked like something that should be a pond. So. Uh, Eventually, I found the courage to, uh, to dig it out, and basically a bunch of goldfish um, they, uh, survived the winter. This is an apple orchard. So, uh, again, you know, it's just this little area of, uh, of land that I didn't really know what to do with. So, uh, I just put in a bunch of apple trees. It gives the place a little bit of that rural feel. So I, you know. What else can we say about gardening? I find it incredibly relaxing and really, really engaging. You know, it's one of those, uh, one of those hobbies that you, you start working on at the beginning of the day and you realize at the end of the day, you know, you've just been into it the whole time. You know, I uh, have long felt, really from the beginning, uh, that we were very lucky to have the opportunity um, and to just have some space to, to work with. And so I thought it would be best to make the most of that and try and make the use the best use of uh, every scrap of, uh, of ground that, uh, that we had. That's a good excuse anyway. But I'm your North Star Follow my bright bird My name is Violet Finvers. I am a fused glass artist. I work out of my home studio in Burnaby. And I started doing glasswork about, I'd say, uh, 2008, um, and have been creating garden pieces for about as long as that. I am a gardener myself, so I just love creating pieces that fit into my garden and play with all sorts of patterns and textures and combine them in different ways. Uh, I really like creating all sorts of different little creatures. So these are some of them. These are my little garden bird sticks. And the way they're made is, the base is a couple of layers of fused glass, but the, all the little patterns on them are made from little bits and pieces of scrap glass that I have left over from other projects. I hate to throw any glass away, so I try to incorporate it into all sorts of different pieces in different ways. It's fun just playing around with the materials and seeing what you end up with. And with glass, you can do so many different things, so it's fantastic. The only unfortunate thing about fused glass is that the materials are ridiculously expensive. So, like I said, I don't throw any of it away. I find some way to reuse it in all my different pieces. These are my garden lanterns. So what they are is an existing lantern that I've picked up and I've created custom glass pieces. So they're fantastic in a dark little spot or on your table. They don't give off a lot of light, but they kind of glow in the dark. I was a graphic designer for about 20 years and all my work was done on the computer so I love working with my hands and making things and with graphic design it became much more of a technical endeavor so I took a glass course from a fellow in town and fell in love with it and just continued to play around with that while I still worked as a designer and then about five years ago switched entirely to working with glass so it's very rewarding and completely different way of working than working on a computer so um, that's how I got into working with glass. It keeps me totally busy and I never run out of things to work on so I love it. These are my large garden lollipops. These are what I call my abstract series, so they look great in any kind of combination and look different depending on how the light shines on them. I find inspiration in all sorts of strange places, like it can be looking through a magazine, it's just a combination of colors that it 
spark my interest or, um, you know, walking around the garden, different flowers and plants. And I've been part of this event for a few years and it is fantastic to be out here in this fabulous garden. Um, all the art looks great and I'm so excited to be part of it. My name is Claudia Wieb and I brought abstract acrylic paintings, mixed media, and it's a variety of some older work and a new series that I just started. I have been painting for about 15 years, but more as a hobby. And just this last year, since the pandemic, I'm doing it full time now. For me, it's an expression of uh, my emotions, what I'm going through, and sometimes it provides me with healing. And my hope is that it resonates with somebody else. Um, painting intuitively, uh, sometimes it takes me on a complete different road. So I have to be open and taking risk where it's gonna lead me to. Um, and that hasn't always been easy. This one was a real tricky one. Um, I had something in mind and it just didn't work out. I could not put my emotion on canvas. It just would not work. And this painting probably has 12 layers of different paintings underneath. And then I basically surrendered and just left it alone and then started with a complete new approach I have not done anything like that before and I will not do it again, <laughs> but it was a very interesting experience and I actually, I love it now. Um, it's not what it was supposed to be, but I embrace what it has turned out to. I just came out of a three months block uh, where I felt I was so stuck and having so many critical inner voices. Um, telling me about uh, composition and value and it basically blocked me. I couldn't paint and nothing was good enough. And just these last couple of weeks I let loose and um, it basically has provided me with these new paintings. Um, so these are part of um, New Horizons. The sea, uh, the ocean, um, going for a walk at Ambleside and the seawall, um, I found that it always grounds me. Um, in very difficult times in my life, I felt always uh, uh, some peace going there, um, looking at the ocean and looking at the horizon. And thinking about all that created this whole new series of New Horizons and um, my paintings always leave some room for imagination and um, I'm very passionate about it and I love the process. I love um, uh, the opportunity to show my art and uh, my biggest wish is that it does resonate with someone and sparks their soul. There's nothing I can do, I just keep spinning and spinning
It's that I deserve 